Okay, hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, today I'm going to be going over the different parts that I described in the previous video, uh, basically showing you how you can use the PySyndy code effectively to do whatever system identification you want on whatever dynamical system that you have. Uh, and for these examples, I'll, I'll be showing them for the Lorenz system, which you can see uh, the system up here. It's a coupled system of uh, ODEs in three dimensions. Uh, so X, Y, Z variables. And then uh, just a reminder, the Cindy optimization problem I've written right above me. So it's asking for the set of coefficients that minimizes the difference between your data, uh, some candidate library of terms times some coefficients. Uh, and then we're at what's called a sparsity prior here, uh, basically trying to sparsify those coefficients as much as possible. And this lambda parameter uh, tells you how, sp how much sparsity promotion uh, you want to do while you're optimizing. Uh, and so a natural question that comes up, which I'm going to be addressing in this uh, hopefully quick video, uh, is how to choose algorithm hyperparameters hyper like lambda. Uh, so this will be useful for using PySyndy, but actually what I'm going to be telling you here is sort of a generic uh, technique for choosing these hyperparameters that appear uh, in machine learning techniques. So uh, let's, let's jump in. So I've already loaded in some Lorenz data. I'm going to define the uh, feature names in the Lorenz system, so X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm now just going to define a, a simple optimizer in the code. Oop. So I'm going to use this uh, sequentially threshold least squares algorithm in order to solve this optimization problem. The details aren't super important. Basically, I'm just choosing an algorithm to solve the, the problem. Uh, and I'm going to choose a threshold, which is this lambda here. So I'm going to choose a lambda of zero. And then I'm going to build a Cindy model. So this is pretty easy in the PySyndy code. I'm going to pass the feature names so that it knows what to call things. And I'm also going to pass this optimizer that I just defined with, uh, with this lambda equals zero. So we're not even doing sparse regression. This term is just gone. We're just doing a normal least squares regression. And uh, so that, that makes the Cindy model, but we haven't actually fit it to data yet. To do that, we need to do model.fit, xtrain. So this, I've already loaded in some uh, training Lorenz data, and I also need to tell it what the time step is between the data points. Uh, so that'll fit the model, and then we just do uh, model.print, and that should uh, tell us how it did. And uh, you can see already, it, it basically captures the correct model. So it gets about minus 10 on that X term, uh, gets about 10 on that Y term, and so forth. Um, <coughs> so it gets pretty close to the right model. But you can see that there are a couple of these extra terms uh, that sort of are small, but uh, here and there uh, show up. And ideally, we would want to be able to uh, identify the system very precisely and not have these extra small terms showing up uh, that, that you typically get when you do regular regression rather than sparse regression. So if we turn lambda to something like 0 0.1, you can get rid of these terms and correctly get the Lorenz system. Again, only up to some numerical uh, precision. So for instance, instead of 28, we get 27.992. And these small I numerical errors are always are going to be there, either because you have some noise in your system or uh, your time step between data points is, um, you know, unless it's like infinitely small, there's always going to be some numerical noise there, uh, and that'll show up in your coefficients. Uh, but still, this is essentially the right uh, system we expect, uh, which is great. We, we've showed that a lambda of 0 0.1 works pretty well. Uh, but then if we turn lambda up to like 1.0, uh, we see that actually we're, we're chopping off too many terms, and now the dynamics are too sparse. Uh, so now, for instance, the equation for uh, z dot uh, is just equal to zero, so z is just a constant for all time, uh, which is not the correct dynamics. Uh, so, so clearly, there's some sort of balance between um, having uh, no sparsity promotion and having too much sparsity promotion. And uh, how to actually tune this parameter for your specific system, uh, there's a way of doing that that is beyond what I've shown you here, just basically uh, trying different values of lambda and seeing what works. Uh, so what you typically would want to do, start a new cell here, uh, is, is make what's called a Pareto curve and basically scan through different values of lambda and see how your model does 
uh, as you change that parameter. And you can generate a whole curve like this, uh, which is really nice. So we're gonna just define some different values of these thresholds uh, so from zero to one, uh, going by uh, steps of 0 0.1. Um, we're gonna just record the, co the model coefficients for each of those thresholds, and then we're gonna plot them at the end. So I just need to do some coding work here. Uh, and then so for i and threshold in enumerate threshold scan. So we're just looping through the thresholds. Uh, we're going to um, define our optimizer, again, to be this uh, sequentially threshold least squares. Uh, and we're setting the threshold equal to the one that we're uh, looping through. Uh, again, uh, model is, uh, we're just gonna fit a simple model. Optimizer equals opt. Uh, great, and then uh, we fit the model. Uh, actually, before we do that, I'm just gonna add some noise, make this a little bit more interesting of a problem. Uh, so I'm gonna com uh, compute the root mean square, uh, root mean square error of, um, of the training data uh, with uh, this. Uh, and squared equals false. Okay, so what am I doing here? So all I've done is I've, I'm computing with a function the root mean square error of the training data, and now I'm gonna add 10% of that, uh, that value to the uh, training data to get some uh, noisy data. So x train added noise equals x train plus nubby.random.normal. 0 RMSE divided by 10, uh, x train dot chip. Just make this a little more readable. Okay, uh, basically I'm taking the training data and I'm adding some uh, Gaussian distributed noise with mean zero, so mean zero, and uh, variance, or maybe it's standard deviation, I'd have to check the function again, variance equal to 10% of the root mean square of the training data. Um, and we're adding that, uh, that noise to every single data point in the training uh, data. So it's, it's quite noisy. Um, so uh, this is just to sort of uh, make things a little more interesting and a little more realistic. So now we're gonna fit with that uh, added noise uh, data. And again, pass the time step. And then instead of printing the coefficients, we're just gonna uh, append them to this coefficient array. So looks something like that. And then uh, I've already defined this uh, function plot Pareto, uh, which just needs the uh, parameters I've already, um, I've already sent over here. And uh, we're gonna, so what we've done is we added some noise to the training data. We're now gonna loop over the thresholds uh, and see how our model coefficients change as our threshold changes. And we're gonna compare the performance on a set of testing Lorenz data in X test here. Uh, that, that basically uh, is, a, is a new trajectory where we can evaluate our model. Oh, um, oh I think it's mean squared error. Gonna see me make mistakes too. Uh, great. Okay, so now it's running and it'll generate some curves in a second. And we're gonna uh, walk through those to, to figure out how do you actually choose your value. So uh, the first thing I'm plotting here is I'm plotting uh, a number of points as the threshold uh, value changes, as lambda changes, uh, versus the root mean square error in x dot on this testing trajectory. And basically what you see is uh, with no sparsity promotion, uh, you do a pretty good job, you fit, you fit the, uh, the x dot data pretty well, but as you chop more terms uh, and get sparse and sparser, your error actually drops. And the reason for that is because you're actually fitting less and less of the noise on the training data. So you actually, when you're sparsity promoting around here, you're actually doing a really good job capturing just the important dynamics in the training data and avoiding overfitting to the noise. Uh, so that's improving your, your model error. Uh, at, but however, at some point, you have these big jumps where the, where the error gets much, much worse. And this corresponds precisely to moments where your threshold 
is chopping off terms into your dynamics that are really important uh, for the dynamical system. Uh, so these, these indicate you sort of have gone too far, and now not only are you not uh, overfitting to noise, but you're actually truncating some of the important dynamics in your system. Uh, so you don't want to you don't want to go too far uh, with your sparsity promotion. So that that's what it looks like for x dot. Uh, if you do the same plot, but for uh, the uh, Lorenz trajectory in x, so you actually take this fit of x dot and you integrate it. Uh, what you might get is is a plot that looks like this, where um, basically the first two two uh, models here actually are uh, growing unbounded. Uh, and, and actually, this, this would fly off the, the chart, but I've, I've um, basically capped it at some large value, like 10 to the 12 something here. Uh, and basically, what is happening is that your model is overfitting to the noise. And now, when it's simulated on a new trajectory, uh, those extra terms that were fitted to the noise are causing the model to go unbounded. Uh, so this is really bad. And one of the big reasons why sparse uh, regression is helpful for improving regular regression. So some sparsity basically uh, chops off those, those uh, noise added terms. And then you get these nice models down here that actually are fitting uh, the new trajectory quite well. Uh, however, again, if you turn up the sparsity promotion too much, so from 0.8 to 0.9, suddenly you're chopping off really important terms again. And once again, <coughs> the models go unbounded in growth. Uh, and so you sort of get this sort of uh, uh, valley here uh, where you want some sparsity promotion, but not too little or too much. Um, so this, this is a pretty uh, generic way to uh, sort of figure out in what range you want to uh, tune this parameter lambda. And uh, for our system, we might choose something between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 uh, as a good choice for this noisy Lorenz data. Seems to work pretty well. Uh, and, and in general, I just wanted to point this out as sort of generic, uh, generic features for how these types of models would look as you scan this hyperparameter around. Uh, so thank you very much for listening, and we'll start with uh, part two in the next video.